you know, after about two or three years of doing Zoom, I'm about to get the hang of it. You know? <laughs> Same here. <laughs> hey, uh, Bill, I wanted to ask you, I'm, I really love this movie, and I was looking over your whole uh, – your whole filmography and uh you know this this is uh this is just the latest in a long line of really significant films that you've done what was it that really appealed to you about this story and what made it kind of stand out to you and say this is what i want to uh tackle as a project well uh donnie and nancy have heard this but um yeah it really it was a combination of things certainly the story itself you know, somebody having a second chance and, and getting that second chance after so many years is intriguing and, and interesting and all that. Uh, and the music was, you know, really, to me, mystical. Um, and so both those things uh, contributed, but ultimately was really actually meeting the people, meeting Donnie and meeting Joe and ultimately meeting the rest of the family that was so intriguing to me and made me want to try to capture this on film um that really was it well i uh, i just love it I, and uh not to spoil for everybody i won't put this in the interview but i love the way that you end the movie you know with the the, the real guys singing up there and uh uh you know with uh, i'm i'm sorry i'm blanking on your name uh your wife uh, singing as well. It's, it's Nancy, and thank you for saying that. Thank you so much for saying that. That means a lot to us because it's a song we wrote together. I thought that was just really uh, just such a sweet way to end it, and and moving, you know. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So we, I mean, it's one of those things you dream about when you know. I was originally writing it, and we even when we in the initial stages of shooting it, you kind of dream that maybe. You know, Donnie and Nancy will write a song, and and you know we could incorporate them somehow into the end of the movie. But you know, it's a dream. You don't really expect that to happen. But yeah. you know, they made it happen. It was great. And speaking of dreams, you know, I mean, this uh, Donnie, this whole movie revolves around your dreams, and uh, you can see it in Casey's performance of the hesitation of man this is a dream that i thought was long dead uh you know that i don't even want to let myself believe it again and uh you know the interesting thing is i just wrote an article last night what would what would i be doing what would any of us be doing if if uh if we if the first person who told us we couldn't do something if we didn't listen to him you know uh so I think uh, for you pressing on as much as you did, Donnie, and then these these feelings come back. Was it like it was in the movie where Casey is just processing it as your character, as as you? Like, I don't know if I want to let myself believe this. Oh, absolutely. Dead on. Yeah. I mean, I can. The emotions you have when something comes back from the past. Me and White. Uh, Matt said something to me when Sullivan, the, the owner of White in the Attic Records, the, the, the actual owner of the record company, he says, most artists don't want to get known from the past because right. skeletons kind of rise up from the past. They want to subdue those or feelings or, of, of, of re, re, resentment or regret or what could have could have happened. You have to live those emotions again. They don't want to live them. And when you, I would think a person would say, oh, I wish I would have done that different in the recording. You oh, know? absolutely. And he's never done that. I've never, it's the most bizarre thing. He has never, ever, ever through this whole process that it came back up in 2011, did I ever hear him say, oh, I wish I would have changed that. Nope. He's just so sad. I've never heard that because most people do. And that's fine. That's fine. Especially when we're in the arts. When we're creators, that's that that's good to want to. That's a normal feeling, I would think. I want to tell you, he I, never did I have that to, album have, when it came back. Yeah, I want to, I, I want to say something about that because I think this is what this film has done helped me with. I want to kind of expand on that. It's kind of made me realize to surrender of trying to get it. Oh, it's got to be better. It's got to go like this. It's got to go like this. It's got to go like this. No, it's how God wanted it. 
Yeah. Just yeah. let it happen. You know, sometimes we call in the music business, the one take is usually the best take. Right. The second take, the third take, usually it's the worst take. The first take that is real is real. If you can accept that, move on. And then that's one thing that's, I've been taking away from this film. It's been really cool for me to actually say, man, I get to move on now. I get to move on now. It's awesome. You've created something and you don't have to tinker with it. You know, it's it's honest and it's raw. Yeah, I was just talking, I was just talking with Matt Sullivan on the phone, the owner of Light in the Attic, just today. I said, man, I hope I'm not letting people down with the song Baby, you know, because I can only be who I am today. I can come as close as I can. Um, but back then, when I was doing the recordings, when I I was trying to actually sing older than I was. Right. And now that I'm older, I can actually hit those pitches that I did before, but I'm just older and which is real. So it's it's kind of a weird thing to look back on. So I'm trying I I'm navigating this. It's a, it's an interesting little journey I'm going through. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Donnie, I think your dad in the movie, um, listen, this is so different than what we see in most Hollywood movies. Most Hollywood movies, the artist perseveres in spite of what their parent says, you know, uh, yeah. and especially fathers. We see a lot of that depiction in fathers who are like, you yeah. can't do it. I can't measure up or whatever. Here we have a totally reversed, very inspirational uh, character of your dad and I think right. that is one of the stand up that's one of my favorite things about the movie of course I love Bo Bridges he's amazing oh, and, man. Uh, yeah. and uh, but I love the fact that it has this positive portrayal of a father who believed and put everything on the line uh, mm -hmm. for his son's dream exactly it's always been that way my dad's that way I was gifted to have a dad like that it was, it was it was destined for me to have that that man as my father. Yeah. But what's so amazing is mom and dad just love music. But they love, you know, pure, innocent, good, sweethearted music. But they love music. So they love their kids. They love music. It's like a her, you know, a Reese's. <laughs> right, right, right. You love music so much. You love your kids. So uh, I just have to say, my stepdad raised me since I was two and a half. Okay, so he's my father. But one day, Don and I were living in Vegas, and I had about thirty-two promo packages out because we were playing music together, and I had everything beautiful promo packages to give to agents, managers, venues. And I was very young, but I was very professional. I was twenty-three, and I was like, "Here we go." And um, my stepdad looked at them, and he says, "Oh, Nancy, they're going to end up in the garbage." And I said, well, I said, it's just the industry. And I said, how do you know? You, you're not in the industry. But he no. said, they're going to end up in the garbage and you're going to, it's, it's going to be a cattle call. And I said, and I didn't know what that meant at the time. He just said, you're going to be in line. They're going to end up the garbage. Well, a few, you know, maybe five years later, he's at one of our concerts wearing Donnie's T-shirt on, on this tour bus. <laughs> so my stepdad did kind of say, hey, I guess you can pay bills doing this. But he came from a whole yeah. different generation. Unfortunately, he's not alive anymore, and I wish he was because he would love oh. what has happened. But he was, he was a, he, yeah. my stepdad worked so hard and he raised seven kids with my mom, you know, but he didn't think you could do that with music. His family totally, you know, totally they awesome. knew it. They knew you could do it with music. And I love it. So I love that journey that his family was so opposite, you know, than my stepdad. So it was wonderful. So for me to see. And now to see it on, on the screen with Bo Bridges, because right. we're fans of, we've been fans of Bo Bridges for years. I mean, oh, years yeah. and years. The famous Baker Boys, I mean, unbelievable. And on and on. Yeah. Uh, and in addition to, to Bo, we have some, Bill, uh, there are just so many good performances in here, getting Casey, um, getting Walter, uh, you want to talk a little bit about the cast since uh, they can't really speak for themselves at this point. Yeah, no, I'm happy to and excited to, because I mean, everybody has some connection. I mean, the first time I met or talked to Walton, like, you know, the kind of first Zoom audition kind of thing, 
you know, it was just so clear that he somehow had lived this life, life or felt that he was really connected with the story um, and looked, looked and talked to a lot of different people over the months and whatever that we were looking at it. Um, and I always came back to Walton and just feeling like he like captured that spirit so much and I knew he would do a good job with it. Ultimately, you know, I wanted him to meet Joe in person, spend time with Joe. Um, when he came in originally, he was, you know, he'd a certain kind of uh, perspective on the role and stuff. Uh, but the day he got there, we, you know, he went out to meet Joe and had some drinks at the local bar and they really got to know each other. I think that was the key to pretty much everybody. Like um, Bo spent tons of time with Don Sr. and they became close friends, to be honest. Well, you can speak to that more, but I mean, I think it's the connection with the real people that really helped with the portrayal as, as you would imagine that would. And it's cool that you, they were so accessible uh, to them. You know, it's not, yeah. we're going to do our own thing or whatever, but I, I'm glad that you encouraged that as well. Yeah. Totally. Uh, Donnie, uh, just <clears throat> one other thing I wanted to ask. Uh, well, I don't know. We have a few minutes, but um, Patty, did you say, did I, did I remember that right? Your name? What's that? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Nancy. Nancy, okay. I'm okay. Sorry. I said, no, that's fine. I, Nancy. I said Patty. Sometimes it takes me a couple times. You know what? I am exactly like that. I'm poor with names, so I, <laughs> it's all good. Trust me. But Nancy, you said something earlier, and if either one of you a little bit about just it's God's timing, uh, and we are, uh, I do write for a, a site that talks about family and faith. This is a uh, a very heartwarming movie, uh, and there, I know there's an undergirding of providence behind it. If you want to talk just a little bit about that, about what uh, what may have been inspiration. I mean, uh, I can gather the fact that you didn't listen to the radio or whatever that your family was not like uh, pop culture centric growing up, and was that was was that for religious reasons or was it just no. uh, Okay. Well, we have we have a strong our faith is really strong in our my family. You know, I grew up on listening to Lawrence Well. Yeah. And not that because I was forced to, I wanted to, because they were the best musicians on the I, 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 was, I could yeah. watch that and come on everyone. and I'd listen to those guys play and I was going to go whoa man those are great musicians They're tight yeah. unbelievable and so it wasn't that I was forced to have a certain way you know it was just a part of us right it was just a part of us we have a strong strong connection to God my mom is a warrior uh, she's a warrior um my dad uh, listens to my mom when it comes to those things. I can tell you, I mean, one little thing, and, and it's going to go really quick. When I was about 15, we were farming. You know, we had we had 800 acres of farm ground, about 900 acres of timber ground. Okay. One summer, we had to get the crops in quick. Okay, because of rain. My mom saw my dad out there on a Sunday. Go, oh, I got to go. We got to put the crops in, man. It's timing. Got to do it. My mom sent me out to my dad and says, no, no, no. You stop doing this right now. We don't do that. This is my mom telling my dad. Right. You're not going to be working on, you know, on the Lord's day. You know, this is, that's what she, you know, that's how she was raised. Yeah, that was My dad connection. fell in line, man. My dad fell in line. He said, okay, we don't do this. We stop. That's what I was raised with. And I and I'm still am today. That's how we are. Okay. Well, good. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. You're hey, welcome. it's uh, it's it's such a pleasure to talk to you guys. Like I said, I you just walk away from this movie uh, with such a good feeling, and I'm glad for uh, 
the the success that happened, Donnie, and uh, for you believing uh, so long ago in your talents, your dad believing in your talents, and then somebody else uh, picking those pieces up, you know, and uh, and returning, and Bill giving this spotlight to the world of this really uh, sweet story. Can I say something? What's so cool about this is his mom and dad have always been consistent. I've known them for 38 years, consistent. They have never changed the way they thought about their kids and the music. It's amazing. They're 92 and 89. They are smiling so big right now. Every time we see them, I was telling Bill at the screening, unbelievable. And and I love it because Bill's got that smile on his face too right now. He's got it's it's, it's that same smile, and it makes me it just it's it's so strong. I can feel it right here. It makes me want to cry, but I'm not going to because I don't want to ruin my makeup. So, but it's <laughs> it's an amazing, and I notice certain smiles in people. It comes from somewhere, and it's it's a higher power. It's, it's, it's God, Spirit. and that's it's you know, Donnie and I. We have the worst days We're sometimes. Downtown. The worst days, our kids. We've been through so much stuff, but we just end up, you know, prayer, God, Jesus. I mean, it is. We don't we don't fool around here. We don't fool around. And you know, I've said this over and over. A lot of ego in the industry of entertainers and, and being in the arts and stuff. And uh, so the faith base is so strong. It really is. And that's what, you know, people are going to see in this movie, I would think. I would hope. Yeah. You no. Know? I believe it. I believe it. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing. And it was just a pleasure to talk to you guys. I downloaded I downloaded the, the album on my iTunes as soon as I saw it. Yeah. So, so thank you. Hey, thanks, Dwayne. You're welcome. <laughs> thanks, You're welcome. I love it, Vaughn. You're welcome. That's so cool. Thank you that's so, so much. Cool. Take care, Dwayne.